All right, so we've gathered up the tools we're going to need to remove all of the screws, screws and other fasteners out of the plate. We've got a socket to remove these larger bolts right here. We've got a, a fairly large flathead to remove those. We've got a slightly smaller flathead to take out the pressure bar screws. And a crescent wrench to loosen the nose bolt nuts here. Some of these are going to be rusty, hard to get out. Some of them may strip on us. If we have to, we drill them out. But the plate's coming out, and in this case, it's not going back in, so we're going to take whatever means necessary to get it out. <laughs> I'm going to start with the pressure bar. Scootin' warm. <laughs> this is always fun. Check out this screw. Pull it in, Daryl. This is a factory deal, too. Apparently, this was a little close to some of the strings or something else, and they have actually filed half of that screw away to gain the clearance. Little things you learn. All right. Let's get some of these big bolts out now and then work on all these little small ones. I believe that's almost all of them out of this top section here. Set that down, get these out. Out of the picture here. Now, folks, sometimes there will be a strip of felt right here or a strip at the top that's wide. But uh, especially in this area here, if there is any felt, you're going to want to peel that out of the way and make sure there are not screws hidden underneath that. That happens a lot. You're not going to see any down here. That's just the part of the string and braid and the, the felt that insulates the string from contact with the plate. But uh, up in the stringing area here, it's very common to find uh, screws recessed underneath felt. We got that bolt loose right there. I'm going to come around and hit the tail uh, down low here while I'm at it. undo this nose bolt right here just loosen it I loosen these and I leave them in place to hold the plate when I stand it up if I'm doing this as a one-man gig here All righty. So there's that there's that get these pieces out of the way now I've got some bolts through here that are going to be interesting to get to Let's see here. I don't think we're going to be able, probably not going to drill a hole. That would be really easy. Resist that urge. Okay. Hmm. Now that one we can get through here. This one we may actually shave part of the wood off right there, but I may be able to get in there. Let's just see what happens. Generally what this means, you can usually get started, but by the time it comes up, you're not able to stay on it. We're probably going to have to take that corner out. Yeah, we're going to have to take that corner out. This one I can get to. Let's see here. There we go right there. Yeah, that is a pretty long bolt right there. Sometimes for giggles. When I've got a bolt hidden like this, I'll go ahead and try to take the to take these screws out here, but the vast majority of the time this is glued on so well it would result in damage to the side of the piano if we were to break this loose. So since I already have more down here that I don't want to break this loose for, I'm going to go ahead and figure out another way to get that one, that one, and this one out of there. Okay, folks, so we're just going to try the good old crescent wrench and the bit that I was using in the impact drill. See if we can't get these broken loose here. Let's see here. It's going to be the long way, but it's what I've got. It 
out a break. Come on, there it goes. All right, so got those out. We're going to do a little something different for this one right here because even if we use this tool setup, this is going to come up and strike right here and prevent us from being able to get it out of there. Now, in some cases, I'll raise it as high as I can and cut it off with a hacksaw and then use vice grips to raise the stud the rest of the way out, cut again if I have to, but I can work it out that way. However, with this being so close to this edge, I'm simply going to chisel a little bit of this away right here and uh, enable me to get that uh, driver bit onto it right there. All right, so we're gonna just kind of take out just enough here to get us started doing that. Alrighty, this is what we're going to get out of this right here. Here we go. Let's see if we can make this work now. And if not, we'll chisel a little bit more out. That's what'll happen. Alright, sometimes I seat things a little bit there. There we go. Alright. See, that is, I believe, the last of our plate screws. Always is a good idea to run around and check them. Glance over everything. Now we got the back, I'm sorry, we have that bottom row still we've got to do. But I think that's all of them here at the top. So let's take that bottom row out and we'll be ready to extract the plate. Alrighty. See, we've got a nose bolt here. There's often one in this area here where these two struts come together, but it looks like the engineers chose to put a screw there instead. So I don't see anything here. We've already found that one. Uh, there's one here at this strut, and I don't see any others. So at this point in time, the plate is probably, yeah, it's coming loose. So we're ready to take it on out now. All right, despite how keen I am to do this by myself and perhaps get myself killed on camera, which would no doubt boost views right through the roof, I wouldn't be around to enjoy that. So we're going to get Roy, stand this up and get the plate out. Okay, so we're ready to stand the piano up now and do the last little bit to remove this plate. I have chosen to leave the casters off right now because it's going to make it easier to get the plate out with just one or two people. So what we're about to do is stand it up, take out those last two of the uh, nose bolts here and here, and then we're going to ease the plate out. We'll have to bring one side out first, probably this side, so that we can clear the uh, arm and the toe block on this side. All right, Roy, let's stand her up. Oh, Woohoo, Mama! Woohoo! All right, there she is in place. We're going to take out the last two bolts. I got one right there, I think. And we ought to be able to walk it off the uh, walk it off the bolts there. All righty, we'll let your end go first. Okay, up oh, we have a screw there. I'm going to take this felt out. It's going to give us a little bit more room on this side, too. Get in there and get that out. Now I can actually come this way a little better. Walk it on out. All right, just pause it right there. All right, folks, that particular piece of cast iron is out. We save these for a neighbor who recycles them so they're not just thrown into a landfill. And uh, we'll be back to take the soundboard out, and uh, we'll be done with that part of the uh, teardown. Okay, so we've got the plate out now. That will actually go off to recycling, so it's not just thrown away in the dump. Uh, and what we've got to do now is decide how we want to deal with the soundboard. For the purpose of this video, we're going to remove this soundboard. 
it's in decent enough shape that we could go either way with it. If we were going to keep it to get the best sound out of it, we'd want to shave this bridge off. And I say shave because even if you take the screws out of the back of it and try and chisel it off, it almost always tears the uh, soft spruce soundboard up. And so if we were going to keep this board, we would back all the screws out and then I would use a saw and cut as close to the soundboard as I could and then take a router and route the rest of it flush uh, with the soundboard itself. That would be for the, uh, the uh, tenor and treble bridge here and the bass bridge as well. The more mass you can remove from the soundboard, the more freely it's going to vibrate. And one of the tools, one of the uh, sound devices we use is, is a bass shaker um, that we mount on the soundboard. And we'll actually test a number of areas and find the sweet spot for that particular board and then secure it to the soundboard. And that's part of the reason our digital conversion sounds so much better than an original digital is we're utilizing this entire area as essentially a speaker where on a digital piano you're getting sound coming from basically two areas. And so that's part of what helps this sound more like a piano rather than a digital. A uh, couple of things, we'll need to take these out as well. That's a fairly minor thing, a, a wrench, spin them out. And then we'll go around to the backside and knock the soundboard out. But first, there's a couple of trim strips here. Not really trim. Um, it's used for setting the down bearing, which is the relationship of the plate to the bridge. So I'm going to get these out first. Sometimes they're glued in. Sometimes they're just tacked in. Uh, again, I'm not worried about the finish here because this is coming out. If we were going to preserve the soundboard, I would take more precautions when, uh, when removing this. Well, I wouldn't even be removing this if I were preserving the board. I don't know how well this will come out on camera, but the, the, the best, part, best sounding part of the soundboard is usually in this area here because up here you're so close, there's no room for anything to vibrate. Right in here you get a lot of great bass response uh, and that usually is where we wind up putting our shaker. It's going to be in this area in here somewhere. All right, so I need to go ahead and get this piece off right here. There we go. That shouldn't be too bad right there. There we are. There, that's off. And it looks like we got this one here to get off to. There we go. Okay. That's off. Well, let me find my little adjustable wrench and we will get, these are so loose, you know what? That one's actually coming out. This should not be this loose. If this piano were being rebuilt, this would need to be dealt with. That should not have been that easy to get out. This one I think is a little tighter. Yeah, let me get my wrench for that. We'll get it out. All right, that's everything we're going to do from this side. All right, what I try to do from this side is I use a 2x4 uh, to help me get as close to the edges, the perimeter of the soundboard as I can, and I just give it a good, uh, good stout uh, smack with a hammer, and we work our way around. We're not going to be able to get one corner all the way loose in most cases. We're going to work our way around, work our way around as many times as necessary, uh, to uh, to get this uh, soundboard loose. And I just thought of something. I already have my safety glasses on, but I'm going to need hearing protection. All right, folks. Now I got the hearing protection ready to go. You can start wherever you want to start, but we're going to work around the perimeter probably several times unless this thing just falls out, which has been known to happen. Looks like it's going to be just uh, one pass around for this. Let's see how we look on this side. Come on around, Daryl. Uh, it's going to 
going to be a little bit of cleanup work to do, but yeah, that's pretty much how most of them come out. We always wind up putting some cracks in them here and there. Unfortunately, there's not much we can do with this, but uh, it's out. Take a look from the front, Daryl. Show them how lovely that is. What we'll do now, clean these areas up, clean this off, and we'll actually use a much thinner panel with less mass that's going to really let us take advantage of the function of this shaker to uh, reproduce base tones for our upcoming digital install. So I'm going to go off camera now, do a little bit of cleaning up, and we'll come back. All right. Well, that concludes the teardown portion uh, for this series of videos on converting an acoustic to a digital piano. In the uh, next portion, we'll be putting in a soundboard and then determining which way to take the project, which in this case is going to be a dig acoustic action with genuine piano keys, genuine piano action, and then a strip out of Casio PX870. So tune in.